I'm going to show you how to set up a relatively complicated data file. The component that I'm going to use here is a water source heat pump type 919. It's in the TESS HVAC library. And you remember that when you see these logical unit numbers, that means that there's a data file associated with it. The external files that are associated with it are listed here under the external files tab. So I'm going to show you this one that's called SAMP C, which has the basic cooling performance data in it. So I'll edit that and it's going to bring up Notepad and show you the structure of the file. This particular file has three independent variables. These are sort of the things that we know. These are the inlet conditions to this heat pump. Then it's got three performance metrics, three dependent variables. In this case, it is the normalized total cooling capacity, normalized sensible cooling capacity, and normalized power at a certain combination of these independent variables. So what I'm going to show you is how you actually create this data file based on something that you would find in a manufacturer's catalog data. So as I said, this is a heat pump. It is a water source heat pump, so it's got air on the load side and it's got water on the source side. This is the kind of data file that is typical of heat pumps. I'm going to show you how to translate this into the data file that we need. Referring back to the data file for just a moment, you'll notice that the first independent variable is the normal, what we call the normalized airflow steps. That's an indication that this heat pump can operate at two different airflow rates. And if we look over here, there's a column in the heating mode called airflow CFM. And here in the cooling data, there's a column called airflow CFM. And you'll notice that each time there are two values, 730 CFM, 850 CFM, and then it repeats 730, 850. So this data file, like the one that is the example data file, has got two airflow rates in it. So we're going to end up with two values here. I like to start with an Excel sheet, and I'm going to just write the values that are in the actual data file. So my first two values are going to be 730 and 850. And then in a cell over here, I'm going to write myself a comment. These are CFM airflow rates. Next up, we've got normalized water flow rates. If we look over here, there's a column that says GPM, and it's got values of 4, 6, and 8 GPM going down the list. So as with this file, I've got three different water flow rates. They are 4, 6, and 8 GPM. So I'm going to write that in my data file over here, 4, 6, and 8. And then I'm going to leave myself a comment, water flow rates. Now, referring back to my data file, it's got one, two, three, four values of entering liquid water temperatures. Let's go look at the piece of information that the manufacturer has provided. These are the entering water temperatures. So it looks like we've got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 85, 90, 100. So we've got more entering liquid values than are in our sample file. That's fine. Since they don't recommend operation down here at the 20 degree entering water temperature, I'm going to ignore that part of the data file. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 values of entering water temperature. I'm going to put those in this row right here. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 85, 90, 100, 110, and 120. And I'll leave myself my comment entering water temperature. Now, on to the dependent variables. Referring back to the sample data file, I need three values for each combination of these points. So this first data point here is going to correspond to this first airflow rate, the first water flow rate, and the first entering liquid temperature. So let's go over here and look at what we've got. At a value of 734 GPM and 30 degrees Fahrenheit entering water temperature, what I need to know is the total cooling capacity. I read that right off of here. So 4 GPM, 30 degrees entering water temperature, an airflow rate of 730, total cooling capacity is 30.2.
Next, I need to know the sensible cooling capacity. That says it's 17.9. And then I need to know the power consumption. So that is 0.97. We're going to normalize this whole thing later. We'll get to that in a minute. The second line corresponds to the first airflow, the first water flow, and the second entering liquid temperature. So let's go find those data. So now we've moved up to an entering water temperature of 40, but I'm still at 4 GPM and 730 CFM. Now the total cooling capacity is 29.9. Sensible cooling capacity, 18.2. And the power has changed to 1.07. So the first value is total cooling capacity. And I think that this is in thousands of BTUs per hour. Sensible cooling capacity in kBTU per hour and power in kilowatts. And then what I'll do here is I'm going to write 730, 4, and 30. Now I'm going to copy that whole line here. And the only difference here is that this is now 40. Once I get to the end of this set of numbers here, so I'll copy that and I'll paste it here, transposed. Once I get down to here, the next thing will be 6 GPM. So once I get through with all the 4 GPMs, 6 GPM, 730 CFM. And again, we're going to repeat this. We'll keep doing that once we get to the end of the 8 GPMs. Then we're going to switch to the 850 CFMs. So we're going to have one row for each combination of these things. Okay, so I've gone through and filled out my data file. Somewhat painful process. But here I've now got all of this data for cooling transcribed into the format that Transis is going to want. Now what we have to do is normalize this data file. What we mean is that every point in here is going to be divided by the total capacity at the heat pump's rated condition. Once you normalize these data files, they tend to look very similar to one another. Then just by changing the rated values, the rated total cooling capacity, the rated sensible capacity, and the rated power, it makes it very easy to quickly change heat pump sizes. So we have to figure out what the rated condition is. And oftentimes there will be a few clues in the data file. You see right up at the top here, hopefully it's clear enough on your screen, but it says 850 CFM nominal rated airflow in cooling. So we know that in cooling, it's these 850 CFM values, one of which is going to be the rated condition. Sometimes you can go and look in a standard and they'll reference which standard it comes from. So if you look down here at the bottom, it's talking about an ARI standard and an ISO standard for what the entering conditions are. You can also sometimes guess because there'll be one value that's sort of outside of the usual pattern. So we're going up by 10 degree increments here, and all of a sudden there's an 85, a 5 degree increment. That's a good guess there that that would be the rated condition, that that's why they put that in there. So we know it's 850. We know it's 85. I didn't find anything in this data file about the rated GPM. But here, actually, what I did was I was able to look at the specification sheet that I was given, and this particular unit was called out with about a 6 GPM flow rate. So I'm going to guess this point right here is the rated condition, 850 CFM, 85 degree entering water temperature, and 6 GPM on the water side. So I need to find that same point in my data file. So I'm looking for... 850 GPM, or excuse me, CFM. I'm looking for 6 GPM, somewhere in here, and I'm looking for the 85 points. Right there is my rated condition. A good way of double checking is that if you look at this data file here, you'll see that this is a model 026, meaning that it's a 26 kilo BTU per hour heat pump. 
and you see that their cooling capacity at the rated condition is pretty darn close to what they call it for the, the model number. That's a pretty good guess that, that you've got the right, the right spot. So now what we're gonna do is calculate the normalized values of all these things. So this value is going to be equal to this value divided by the corresponding value at the rated condition. There's my equation for that. I'm gonna do the same thing for sensible and for power. So this is going to equal the sensible cooling divided by the sensible cooling at the rated condition. And this is going to be the power consumption divided by the power consumption at the rated condition. Now, perhaps you see why it was that I didn't really worry too much about the fact that these are not the units that I want to deal with. So I'm gonna take these and pull this whole thing down. And here I've got a data file. You should see ones across the board at the rated condition. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reassemble this data file on another sheet in Excel. So I'm gonna paste those values here. Again, we'll reduce the decimal point. My comments are all fine. So I'm gonna copy those across. Now, remember if we look back at the data file that we were talking about, these airflow steps are normalized as well. So we need to divide these things by their normalized value. So this is going to be 730 divided by 850.859. I'll just type that in here. And then I know that this other one is one. That's the rated condition. So this is zero to one normalized airflow rate. This is going to be zero to one normalized water flow rate. And I know that I've got three values here, four, six, and eight GPM. So this is going to be four divided by six. Probably can do this in your head. And then the other one is going to be eight divided by six, 1.33. This next row is going to be straight across, but we don't want to use Fahrenheit. We want to use Celsius. So I'm going to stick a row in here and I'll just really quickly convert Is that minus 32. Times 9 divided by 5. I went the wrong way. It should be times 5 divided by 9. Looks better. There we go. Paste those values. And then I can get my comment back. These are now in degrees C. And if I save this, save it first as an Excel file. But then I'm going to save it as a tab delimited text file, heat pump data. I'll call it underscore C to tell myself that this is the cooling data and I can give it whatever extension I want. I'll leave it text, that's fine. Excel will warn me that it's gonna get rid of a bunch of things here if I keep doing this. Now, if I go and look at that file, You can see that what I've got here is something that looks just like what Transys wants it to look like. I'm pretty sure I do need to get rid of those quote marks so I can just do a block replace here. There we go. And there's our data file for Transys. All I have to do now is point this to my new data file. Now, you have to make sure that these parameter values here match what's in the data file. Remember, we didn't change the number of airflow rates and we didn't change the number of water flow rates, but we did change the number of entering water temperatures. So we've got to make sure that that's reflected. So we've got, I think it's 11 values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yes. So I need to go down here and still have three water flow steps. But here where it says number of water temperatures in the cooling file, I've got to make that 11. Likewise, I'd have to go down through the rest of these with the other two data files as well. The final thing that we have to do is to go down here and make sure that these bottom parameters reflect the values at the rated condition. 
These values are going to be multiplied by the multipliers in the data file. That is what's going to give us the actual performance of the machine. So I'll show you how that works. So we've just done cooling. And our device here, you'll remember, so we can go back to our Excel and the unnormalized one, was 25.6. So I need to set this. I'm setting it to BTU per hour, 25,600 BTUs per hour. And the rated sensible capacity, 18.3. And the rated power, that was in kilowatts. There we go. Now, again, I'll have to repeat this for the heating side of the heat pump. Should make sure to set this correctly. CFM, and instead of 635, we said this was 850. And set that here as well. And we've got to set the rated liquid flow rate as well. GPM was six. Okay, that is how you set up some of these more complicated data files.